Good morning. I see how you doing, bud. Good. Hey, we uh, at the start of our slot, so we only have like one hour. So you know, maybe let's get started there. So you have landed into the LSVR working group, and uh, we have a few interesting topics here. Now, before we start, let me see if my slides actually work. OK. So we don't need the scribe thing, because we have the scribe automatically built in into the tool nowadays, which is very handy. Uh, if there are like any minutes, then you know, please feel free to use the minute tab you know, on top of the uh, Meet Echo screen. You don't have to do this, you know, just by yourself. We can actually all do this together, so that's very hands, handful, you know, very handy and very convenient. So that will be appreciated. Uh, next is you have seen this note well already a few times because we're already on the second day. If any questions, you know, please be aware of this. Then the agenda bashing. So what we have on the agenda at this point in time is uh, three topics, three main topics here. Uh, First, we're gonna get like an, an L3DL uh, status update. Then we're gonna have uh, Paul speaking a bit about LDP v2, which is you know uh, what is happening in the IEEE uh, from that perspective. Then we're gonna be discussing the enhancements and the progress around the BGP SPF uh, draft itself and see where we are. And then we are going to be closing. So where are we within the in our working group here. So we have sent two documents towards the AD. The AD reviewed it and actually, you know, sent it back. But you know, together when sending it back, he actually sent, you know, it back with like a thousand and one pages of feedback, which uh, the authors have been working upon very intensively, you know, over the New Year's period uh, until now. And AC is going to give like uh, a f an update on on where we are at this point in time with this particular draft. Now, in the meantime, also uh, last month, we have done a working uh, working group last call on the L3 DL documents. Uh, while no major concerns were raised, you know, there was also not really a lot of feedback on that. So, you know, we need to figure out how to deal with that going forward. Now, that being said, there is another element playing also, and that has to do with the fact that L3DL is a little bit out of scope from our charter. So what we are thinking about doing is to reshorter the working group uh, by explicitly adding the L3DL components into the charter itself, which would give us you know, a better foundation to keep progressing on, on this particular technology uh, going forward. Uh, and that being said, you know, for in an effort for trying to enhance uh, the feedback required, you know, feedback requested and reviews requested for these documents. Uh, I will also be, you know, launching a call on the working group uh, email alias for some volunteers to actually give feedback on these on these documents, uh, just to trigger, you know, more discussions on that going forward. Uh, you have anything to add on this, Victor? Pretty much covers it. So, no. Sorry, um, now that covers it from my perspective as well. Okay, so yeah, I already talked about the I triple E status uh, element here, which Paul is going to give us uh, an update about. So, going back to the agenda, any anybody wants to add or change something on here uh, at this point in time? If not, I think then we're going to be starting with the first session, uh, the first slot from Randy. Okay, so let me pull up the slides for Randy. Uh, voila. So Randy, if you can push the microphone button, then the floor or the worldwide internet is all yours at this point in time. Well, I can only use this very small portion of the internet. <laughs> um, okay, this it's, Sue um, raised an issue uh, via private email which was interesting. Um, but first, just a little, little bit more on status is the documents, the three L3 DL documents passed 
people from the class call with, as Gunther said, light feedback. But um, you should be aware that also the Rob is contemplating upgrading, updating the LSOE open source implementation to L3DL. So that kind of wraps the status. Um, so Sue raised an issue <clears throat> about the hello PDU possibly causing a layer two storm. Next slide, please. If you remember, the hello is a multicast layer two PDU being sent from a device who wakes up and is seeking friendship. There are two forms the PDU can take. One is that first Mac, which is stopped dead at the nearest bridge by layer two rules. Okay. If just in case there's an intermediate switch, we specified a uh, to be assigned Mac that will pierce an intermediate switch because by layer two rules, when a switch receives a frame with a multicast desk that it doesn't recognize it forwards. Okay, so the second one is to be used when you know you're connected to a switch. Next slide, please. So the document says that that hello should be repeated at a configured interval with a default of 60 seconds. So when a device wakes up, it should find its friends within a mean of 30 seconds and a max of 60 seconds. But it further warns that if you're in the multi-link scenario, in other words, you're allowing for intermediate switches, be aware of a trade-off between the timer tuning and network noise and maybe tune the timer up or down accordingly. But Sue raised a further issue. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So I've stolen her artwork. Sue, do you want to um, walk through the storm or shall I do it? I think everybody knows what a layer two storm is like so we can breeze through the storm as it were. Or we can, if you've got the patience, you can take us through it. Your mic's on, but I don't hear you. Um, that means yep. because them, they need to enable me. Did you get me? Can you hear me? Got gotcha. you. Yeah, hear you. Yes. Okay. I would go through the brief because if people understand multicast storms, this may be a simple issue. Uh, if the brief doesn't make it, we'll go through the more lengthy approach. So, uh, folks, the diagram I'll explain, and then I'm going to let Randy go through the discussion because he tends to be a bit briefer than I. The concept is you don't have the topology described in the document. Okay, and Randy will go through it, but you have this more interconnected switch topology. How you got there, not my problem. Uh, perhaps it's recon errors. And so this is the error topology. Note, I realize it is not a standard class topology. It would be created by error or by something else. So, Randy, why don't you um, why don't you go ahead, or I can explain the next okay. set. No, next it's slide. Fine. It's fine. So essentially, the routers, the things labeled routers, are L3DL speakers. 
the things not labeled routers, the little square cubes, oops, that's bad, the little cubes are switches. Whereas if you use the multicast to be assigned, multicast packets will go not only through them, but it will, as it receives one, next slide please, it will re-announce it. Okay, you see the multicast hello coming up from router array and switch one re-announcing that on all its other interfaces. Next slide, please. Those other destinations generously do similarly. And we can see more pretty colored little boxes multiplying in the network. Next slide, please. Those in turn echo back. Now what was fun here is that because the echoes caused regeneration. They go back, they're allowed to come back through the mesh and are even worse. Next slide, please. So I think you see where this is going. If anybody wants more detail on layer two storms, feel free to hit your mic button. Ah, oh, Bill. Bill? Hi. Do you have a layer two network without spanning tree, but with loops? Like, how do you get to this point where the switches are flooding and creating a storm? That's a good point. This is an edge case, Bill. The spanning tree is most likely not running you would have some interconnections that are are um, nor normal. So as I started out in the beginning, this broadcast storm only works with a combined, with a set of edge cases, okay? You don't have something that's living, running a spanning tree. You're using uh, the multicast transmission, which goes through switches and then redistributes widely. Um, Paul, I don't know if this is even possible in the current thing. Just, just, Bill, let me see if I can cut to the chase here. Excuse the spoiler. Uh, the final scene of the movie is, this isn't our envisioned topology in this working group. This isn't a club, and there's tons of intermediate switches, which we don't envision. We envision LSR enabled device, LSVO enabled devices, all on link to link. Just in case, but we can move forward. Let me move forward. Next slide, please. I think we also have Paul actually in the line here. Uh, I'm sorry, not really Paul. Sure yeah, I just was going to echo kind of what Bill said. We have it obviously a kind of an invalid layer two topology here. There's besides multicast, there would be other flooded packets that were not learned yet or various things. So I also wanted to point out spanning tree is not your only topology management protocol at layer two. There's other approaches, including software defined networking things or as well as shortest path bridging. And so to, to make this work, I mean, there must be some kind of loop-free topology management going on that would prevent this. I mean, so. yeah, my po my point is, I don't want to make it work. I don't think we're interested in it. But well, I'll get there in a minute. Next slide, please. Okay, one approach, aside from as Paul and Fenron point out, um, um, try to use standard layer two damping tools is, do we add a nonce? No, nice try because the PE nonce wouldn't be recognized by those non-L3DL speakers. So the storm would propagate. Next slide, please. But isn't, this isn't our model. Okay, we don't have a model with all these switches with a dumb switch mesh. Next slide, please. Our model 
is a cloak, a standard cloak fabric, and they're all L3DL speakers. Next slide, please. At worst, we might have a switch that wants some fan out one stage, which is why we stuck that one um, form of switch piercing multicast Mac. Okay, this isn't going to storm. Next slide, please. So do we actually have a problem? And that's the end. Comments is because I think it's an edge case. I didn't perceive anything that really needed to be fixed after our discussion with Randy. And I couldn't think of a of a shortest path bridging or a normal spanning tree topology where this would actually apply. I I just thought outside the box, so I'll leave this to Bill and the rest. I didn't think there was a problem because I don't think the scenario I described is something you would normally see. Now that I've shared my evil nightmare, I'll let the rest of you work. Sorry, Bill? Uh, just um, there are other packets like broadcasts that also need to be um, not uh, create a storm. And multicast is just another instance of this. So you need to have some mechanism, spanning tree, or, or as Paul said, there are many other mechanisms in your layer two to prevent storms. It's not just multicast that has this problem. So to have an, a layer two like this is just to have an invalid layer two. It's not just this particular multicast that will have a problem. It's broadcast ARPs. It's unicast unlearned uh, flooding. So I think yeah. the pro even though even though we don't need this, you know, we don't want to address this topology because it's not a clo. We also don't want to address this topology because it's just not a valid layer two to run over. Um. I agree, first of all. Um, there's a hidden issue here or desire here, which is over in IDR, they're discussing BGP discovery, finding your friends, and their immediate target is the data center. I don't know if they are limiting their definition of data center to be a, a clo. Um, as far as I can tell, they're in the expansion and laundry list phase. Um, but I think this probably tr triggered the oh my God, what happens when there's all these other devices here? Um, one thing we could do is, by the way, is ignore or actually prohibit the case when there's an intermediate switch and remove that second form of Mac. I'm not advocating it. I'm saying, you know, that certainly shuts off this possibility of discussion. So one of the I things, you know, yeah, I go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering about the fact, you know, so if you look into the layer two topology, what we have here, you know, it's a little bit legal because it represents a layer two environment without, you know, a spanning tree or, you know, a, some sort of a protocol to do, you know, to manage the multicast and broadcast flooding within the environment, which is a little bit, I think, illegal. Huh? Well, it will give problems always. So, I think we should, you know, to me, we should the L3DL should support like multi le levels of, you know, of, of switches, 
but we should have a floating mechanisms. You know, that should be uh, you know a requirement. I think if we, if that actually happens, it should not be not that's what I'm thinking. Um, I think everybody's discussed the fact that that topology is not something you want to write home to mother about. Um, but that last statement you made is that L3DL should support multi-layer uh, switching topology, properly configured, of course. Is that really a target for LSVR? And I'm asking you as chair. From LSVR, I don't think that is the case. But then again, I think L3DL, you know, is a technology which could be used potentially beyond, you know, the LSVR use case. Eh? So I don't, you know, I think if we constrain it too far in the applicability at this point in time, then in the later phase, we will have to do, you know, more R&D research to expand, you know, the use case from it. Ah, Paul? Yeah, I was going to respond to your comment about maybe not using the um, address that passes through switches and using one that terminates at switches like um, LLDP might. Um, and there's probably a couple of ways that you could do that. Um, first of all, in 802.1, we do have regist attribute registration protocols that allow you to propagate information like who my neighbor might be or something about somebody across the network like that you showed uh, without flooding and without you know without causing the storm um, so there's there are separate registration protocols that could be leveraged but perhaps even easier would be to to find your own like higher layer entity that propagates information using um uh, you know, hop by hop kind of methodology. So, in other words, we do this in LLDP as well. You 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 may receive uh, some information on one link, and then you generate an entirely another packet rather than just using the forwarding plane. You use the software plane. You generate a, another one that goes out the other links um, that sort of propagates that information. So, you could conceivably build some higher layer uh entity when i say higher layer i mean above layer two <laughs> so um you know some software forwarder so to speak that that just regenerated the l3dl information um uh and sent it in a whole new packet rather than just flooding it so anyway just a couple of thoughts there's there's possible ways i think you could do what you were proposing randy jeff Hey, Randy. Uh, Jeff has Juniper. The, the point from the autoconf, I suspect, was the genesis for this conversation, but I think it probably still impacts health LSVR as well. The observation that we'd left in the documents that we did for autoconf is yet to figure out what is the scope of the thing you want to talk to. In this case, we're talking about L2, and I think you've nailed the point perfectly fine that if you do something that goes beyond the scope of the thing I'm talking to at the end of this wire to a broader domain, if you have a miswiring in your network, it's potentially problematic. I'm not saying that you should solve that. And um, it would probably... be nice. Some, some operators have told us one of the things they like about this is it might help them detect miswires. Sorry, did you interrupt? I, no, I, I agree with you. Um, it's one of the things I do like about L3DL is that uh, it's good plumbing to extend for a lot of uh, things, including this use case. Um, I, I think that we both realize that if uh, that is part of the core use case, a little bit of additional machinery needs to be added to the protocol. Glad they discussed. Thank you. My forward proposal at the moment is this is not our problem in L3, in LSVR. If people 
over in IDR want to uh, use L3DL, certainly we can discuss it with them. Somebody feel free to whack me on that. Okay. Then I'm done. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. So let's jump to the next one. I think this is going to be Paul now. So instead of five minutes, you actually have 10 minutes, Paul. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm assuming you can hear me okay. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's been a while since we've I've given you an update on what we call Project 802.1 ABDH, um, which we we call in 802.1 XLLDP, but we've talked in the past about it being called sort of LLDP version two. Uh, and the main the main objective here was to allow us to send more information in LLDP than can typically fit in a single frame, uh, but do that in a way that is backward compatible. So it, uh, la I, I have some, uh, well, first of all, we have an editor uh, who's been developing the draft, uh, Steve Haddock, if you may or may not know him, he's been around for quite a while, excellent editor. Uh, and the, pro the draft has made quite a bit of progress in sort of getting to the final, final stages, if you will. So next slide, um, because first of all, this is a, an individual contribution. This is not an official kind of quote liaison or anything from IEEE 802. This is just me. However, if, if uh, LSVR was interested, we could do uh, something a little more formal in terms of document sharing and those kind of things. So making it possible for, uh, you know, your the LSVR group to, you know, comment, vote, whatever on the documents. We're, we're typically very liberal about accepting comments from, from anybody anyway uh, in the earliest phases. Once you get to the final, final phase, uh, then of course it's a, a things are, a process is a little bit more tight, but in general, we're, we're open for comment. So, so anyway, next slide. Um, so briefly, this is the, uh, I didn't want to get into, I don't have, you know, in five or 10 minutes, still not enough to do a lot of technical discussion here. So there have been uh, presentations in the past. I point out that the, the motivation for originally doing this work came from um, looking at the requirements that LS, L3DL was satisfying uh, and trying to see if it was time to update LLDP. It's a widely used protocol. Uh, there were a lot of people that have augmented it or added additional information, and it really pushed the boundaries when it only allowed you to send a single frame. Uh, so the L3DL motivation helped kick us off into this new project in general. So there's some background presentations here. And again, last time we did an update was IETF 106, but nothing really has technically changed since then. Um, I've just got some references to pointers for the project page and the, and the, the project scope and those kinds of things. You're welcome to read. Uh, and then more recently, the, the sort of technical contributions, um, there, as Steve Haddock came in and became editor, he had a, a couple of questions and he noted a few things. Uh, we had resolved those. Those are discussed in here. Uh, and uh, there's a paper written by myself and Paul Botorf, uh who kind of goes into really more of the details that's the fundamentals for the for the uh the draft so feel free to take a look at those i think those are all publicly available documents uh next slide <clears throat> so since the last uh the status and since the last itf um we've co what we completed what we call the working group ballot first working group ballot uh, and the that was very recently completed it's kind of roughly equivalent to an IETF last call, uh, and we're we're resolving those comments now uh, this week. As unfortunately, IETF and IEEE overlapped uh, at the same time, so it made it difficult to attend both. Um, but really, the changes are we put all the content into the format of a standard. Um, we the, that draft is complete with all the normative text and state machines and and conformance. We're using this XLLDP terminology to, to express the extension of LLDP. It's not 
necessarily a version two because what's important is that a version one implementation that's probably already running in the network is capable of communicating with a version two uh, but obviously only the first PDU's worth of information um, but in that PDU we we defined a, a, a new t a new TLV that basically describes a set of extensions um, and uh, and all that information allows you to send up to like 64 or more PDUs worth of, of data. Um, and one technical thing that came up, LLDP supports the concept of uh, multiple agents per interface. Uh, and really, there's different scope. Uh, in L L2 networks, you might have provider bridges or provider backbone bridges, which are kind of layers of layer two, if you will. Um, and we want to be able to communicate LLDP messages between different endpoints across that layer two topology. And so there was some, there's some trickiness in how that works, but we made some clarification of that in the standard. So it's always been there. It's not new support. Uh, it's just when we added X LLDP uh, capability, it got a little bit more interesting. So um, next slide. So the next steps is again, we're resolving comments on uh, Thursday, I guess it is this week. Um, and then we'll have what we call a recirculation ballot. If that passes, then it goes to uh, what we call standards association ballot, which is kind of, you know, the, the equivalent of the end of the road. Uh, and um, what would be great is to see an open source implementation. You know, the current LLDP open source implementation would be would be great to see that augmented to support this. Um, and then, like I mentioned early on, if there's a desire, we can do some liaison and document sharing with LSVR if uh, if that's of interest. Um, we can take that offline to to roll those wheels. So if anybody's interested in doing that. So anyway, that's that's really the update. Um, if there's any questions, happy to take those. Thank you, Paul. Any questions at all? If not, then we're going to go to the next uh, slot. I think AC. Yeah. Oh, I, no, this isn't just a question. It's AC Lindum Cisco. I want to say that I think this is uh, good work. Uh, I'm hoping, I recommended that Cisco support this, even though I'm not active in the IEEE. So I'm hope, hoping that happened. Uh, yeah, we did get your support to make it all happen. Thank you. Thank you. Randy Bouchardis and uh, I. Randy. Um, um, Randy had um, a. Uh, I, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Randy. Hi. I did uh, come over to IEEE and try to help and join this and nothing much was happening. If things are spinning up again, I again volunteer to help. Okay. Let me know how we, well, we make that happen. I can, uh, I'll bring that back to the group and mention somehow we can, as an individual, work you in or, or um, again, we can do a more official collaboration. I'm just an old hippie engineer, so you can wrap whatever you want around it. Um, but the email works well. Okay. Okay, that's it. Okay, let me go to the last section, to the last slot then. Voila. Oops. Okay, here we go. Let me adjust here. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be presenting. One thing, uh, I'm only going to, we, we, well, both uh, documents went back to the working group. We focused on the protocol document with the updates we were doing. Uh, during, uh, starting about uh, Thanksgiving, Kayer, Victor, and I met uh, weekly and and went through the comments. Actually, as Gunther said, there are a lot of comments. I think the, the comments plus the inline draft greatly exceeded 
the size of the original draft. Uh, so there was a we spent uh, quite a bit of time on this on the first document. The reason we didn't look at the applic applicability yet is because uh, why don't you go to the next slide? Because the applicability uh, will be impacted by the chain, the, the protocol. In a lot of places, when we first did this, we thought some in with BGP, we said, yeah, we could do this with BGP SPF. But we took out all those things that we could do but didn't fully specify because we wanted to have a nice, tight core protocol that, could, that can be augmented with future uh, drafts. To do more things with it, uh, a lot of the comments. These are just things we did. We beefed up the uh, error handling. Uh, we added the security section with the parts of it that are relevant to BGP SPF. We clarified the relationship to BD B BGP LS. And, uh, it, you know, in addition, we've always had the separate address family, but we clarified that, clarified which um, NRLI and which uh, attributes we were specifically using in the base protocol. And we also, um, also, like I said, we eliminated things in BGP that we said, you know, you know uh, like for instance, uh, Route ref optimized route reflection. We took that out completely. We took out uh, some of the other discussions of 55, 49 next tops and things like that. And uh, I rewrote the, or we rewrote the SPF section and used consistent terminology throughout. I think, I think it's a lot easier. I mean, it would be, uh, there were actually some mistakes in it too and when, when, once we did that. so. Uh, I know the implementations must. I hope the implementations just said, "Oh, I, we know what it, we know what it, what he means, not or what what the draft means, not what it says," and some other minor nits. Next slide. Yeah, most of the changes were clarifications and things that should have been, you know, where we underspecified. There are weren't a lot of changes to the protocol other than the error handling. I mean that. That really, Kayer really crisped that up because he's familiar with all the different, the evolution of error handling in BGP, complete with uh, the um, the draft. I, I forget the number of it that tells what you do uh, when you, whether you ignore uh, an attribute and continue, or whether you whether you uh, with, take it as an implicit withdrawal, or bring down the session. We tried to stay away from that last one, of course. And uh, we put in the uh, the code points used by the Arcus implementation into the IANA section and have requested early allocation of those. Next slide. Now, this is really the key point. There were a number of things we didn't put in yet, but I think uh, most of them are closed. We inherited, because we use BGP, LS, NRLI, we, kind of, we, we pretty much inherited that you're going to be limited to one NRLI per update because conceivably you could have a bunch of prefixes that all have the same metric, all the same attributes. Uh, but if once you start like that, if, if anything ever changes, you'd have to keep them together because of the sequence number and everything. So I think we're gonna go ahead and say, really, you really, really only can have one NROI per update. I'm gonna go to, the, I'm gonna do initial synchronization last. The next top requirement, uh, K or crit, crisp that up so it follows the 4760 uh, rules. And I think this issue is closed completely. And the single session requirement, this was from El Barro, but we, he said, he said, are you limiting it to a single, uh, a, a separate session for BGPLS and the other address families? And we can take that, we're, we think we're just gonna verify this on the list. We don't think that it needs to be. So we're not gonna do this. 
OK, let me go back to the key one that we're going to discuss. This is the initial synchronization. What Alvaro brought up, which is a really good point, is the IGPs, at least OSPF, uh, has a, you know, you don't advertise a neighbor until you have synchronized with that neighbor or the link that it's, you know, you know, that you're connected over that link to that neighbor. Now, uh, we'll have, we're going to add some discussions of this. I guess ISIS has a, a similar thing that you don't advertise, but it's not mandatory in ISIS. I forget the name of the, the bit in uh, the, in uh, the ISIS hellos. But anyway, um, we're going to discuss that further on the list. The one thing that I was thinking, this is just me, I haven't even talked to my co authors about this, is maybe we could push the route reflector case out or the controller case, you know, talk about that, what you could do, or whether your mileage will vary or whatever. So that's what's coming. Next slide. Like I said, we're gonna we we did one working group last call. We're gonna do another. Once we get this done, we'll start working. You know, once now that we know we've sort of scoped the base protocol down to what we've uh, fully specified, we're gonna work um, on the applicability as well. And there are now multiple implementations. There's a there's Arcus and one underway for uh, with for uh, free range routing. Comments? Alvaro. Uh, hey, guys. Good morning. Um, Alvaro Rathana, um, uh, Featureware Technologies, I guess, speaking as a individual working group participant at this time. Um, I, I just want to, I guess, if we go back to the last slide, to the slide before this one, um, insist a little bit on the separate session requirement, or maybe not requirement, considerations. Because um, not only are we carrying different information inside a BGP session, but we're making decisions based on different things, meaning we're running SPF here versus a decision process in 4271. So the potential dynamics of how the updates get distributed around the network are different from a normal, I, BGP session to a BGP SPF session. Um, so if the working group, so I would, you know, I'll, obviously uh, really want to see a requirement for separate session, but what I would settle for is if we could include in the draft, um, you know, some considerations around, you know, what things um, uh, could happen, you know, what, what things to look at in the network uh, I don't know, congruent topologies, things along those lines. Uh, again, just individual contribution. Uh, I'm going to let, I see Kayers in the queue. I'm going to let him uh, talk to that one. Super. Uh, first of all, uh, Kayer Patel, uh, Arcus, I was going to say Cisco. Uh, <laughs> following AC, but no, Kayer Patel, Arcus. Uh, one thing I wanted to uh, uh, first acknowledge uh, was that uh, it was a fantastic feedback from Alvaro um, on the draft. Uh, we couldn't have asked for more. Um, and so thank you on that. Particularly on a sing uh, single and a separate session requirement. Um, to me, uh, we could certainly add some text in the draft, but um, this is also somewhat an implementation uh, detail in sense that today certain BGP implementations do allow you to run multiple processes wherein you can listen on a different uh, ports uh, over and above 179. So you could definitely fork um, this implementation of some different port where you could listen on to and then it would automatically be a completely separate session. Um, so whether you want to do that or not is a very implementation specific details. Um, a lot of people do it for a lot of different SAFIs. And that's why I think we can add something in uh, in draft uh, as a loose text, but we wouldn't want to make it as a requirement. Thank you. 
Right. The peering, I mean, yeah, you wouldn't want to have, you, you know, especially if you're doing the peering model where you're using a session per, uh, per link, you certainly wouldn't want to have a separate address for peering on two, two addresses to make them unique. Yeah, the separate listener port would typically make yeah. that session completely separate. Yes. Yeah, that'd be a better option. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Bo. I, I know what he's asking. I owe him a response on this. Oh, I have a question that uh, I found uh, from the draft uh, 12 version. Uh, they are at a new chapter 6.1.1. Uh, this I, I think uh, this 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 uh, action is like uh, IGP method, but uh, for BGP for BGP uh, basic basic uh, mechanic uh, the one wrote uh, one wrote uh, originator from itself. Uh, it it may one key it received from another perhaps the S loop or maybe check. Maybe use or other otherwise or be or in the ID maybe used to identify the loop. So I think uh, this uh, scenario perhaps may not be happened uh, in the BGPSPF. Yeah, I I remember this one from the uh, from the email he sent. What he's talking about yeah. is the fact that we uh, we have handling of self um, self originated NRLI. And by self-originated, I don't mean I don't mean NRLI from your neighbor. I mean NRLI where the node descriptor in the BGPLS uh, NRLI identifies the uh, receiving router, and we do it. And and I had added something to do it like the IGPs to speed the convergence in the case. Um, I don't know if we don't think we let me talk about that with uh, with the co-authors on the list. We can see if we we don't need this. Uh, but that was added, yeah, that was added to speed convergence in the, uh, in the event there was stale NRLI. But granted, it should all go away as it permeates from the, you know, from the, from the uh, source, from the, from the originator. Just take, might take a little bit longer without this. Okay. We have a rule that you always, if 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 the, uh, uh, this is to cover the case where the router restarts and loses all its state. We have a rule that if you receive NRLI uh, from the originator, you will uh, you will in fact prefer it even if it has a lower. Uh, uh, a less recent sequence number to take care of this case. So probably maybe we don't need to discuss discuss the uh, uh, the self originated case. I thought about that as well. Okay. Any any more questions, comments? Okay, this is the last slide, uh, AC, or? Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, the Yang model work is in progress in uh, care, care and associates are working with it. Uh, are, are gonna work on it. Uh, okay. We're sort of, I guess the BGP uh, Yang model has gone through one last call. So it would augment it would augment the BGP uh, Yang model in IDR, which is pretty big already with a new address family or new Safi. Well, Kay, are you want to talk to that? Are you, are we going to do all of BGP LS or just what we need for BGP SPF? Um. Uh, we, we were thinking of uh, doing it just specifically for BGP SPF, but it yes, would be yes. generic enough to extend it to LS eventually. 
and maybe if we have an agreement if the chairs have an agreement with the chairs uh, at idr that then it could be a common draft uh, but what we don't want is uh, to have a perception that we are taking over idr's work so if there is an agreement we'd love to do it at a common place i think it makes sense also but then again yeah. i'll defer yeah. that to chairs i think we should defer them to yeah. chairs of which you are one of them from IDR nowadays, so it's going to be easy. Okay. That's it. Uh, Victor, you have any, any last words to say at the end of the session? Specifically, uh, we'll talk, um, I guess we'll take that as a output sort of how we're going to deal with that with, along with IDR. Um, and then we will be processing some of these updates and getting and we'll let the working group know via mailing list when ready for the, the next working group last call. Now, AC, one question I had for you is, um, I guess we have to discuss whether we want to last call the B2B spec before the update to the applicability draft or if we want to get that revved and then kind of send them both in uh, as a pair. Um, if, if, we, if you don't think it's going to take too long to get the applicability updated, then perhaps doing it at the same time, maybe simplify things. Did you have a religion on that? I don't. No, I don't. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind doing separate cycles, but. Okay. I'll discuss with Gunter uh, yeah, offline yeah. and we'll let. Oh, wait, uh, Alvaro has something to say here. Uh, hey, Alvaro is not Um So I would prefer to, if we're going to publish them both, publish them both together. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to last call them at the same time. Um, you know, progress through my queue, and I'll just uh, push them both together at the end. OK. All right, so I'll just go to Gunter. So we were specifically talking there about how to deal with the working group last call, but. It's understood and noted that uh, when we're ready for publishing, that we put them that they should go together for simplicity reasons. No uh, right, right. So if you send them to me, you can send them to me independently. It doesn't matter. I'll just at the end. Got it. But you want to go to the ISG once. I uh, yeah. understood. For me for now, gotcha. Okay, I think then. Uh... I guess we're finished, uh, and I'll, have, I'll give you back like eight minutes of time before stepping into the next session. Thank you all. Thanks.